Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art, and we are here to paint something for Valentine's Day. We have um, January flying by, so let's look ahead and do some fun projects. So say hello when you come on. I'm coming to you this morning through StreamYard so that you can have a close-up view of what I'm painting. If you see a little notification asking you to give um, StreamYard your information or your name, that's strictly so I can see who you are when you comment. So I do have your comments pulled up. I would love it if you say hello when you pop in and thanks for sharing some of your Wednesday morning with me we'll do a quick little project here this is my segment for craft around the clock um, I am up to trying to figure out what we're going to paint for Valentine's Day hey Lisa good morning um, Charlotte good morning thank you guys um, I was to, I was online live with Charlotte last night. She's in my art membership in it. Charlotte, it seems like we were here in this table painting a minute ago. I don't know where the night went. Hi, Tracy. Oh, I hope that you're feeling better. And um, I'm excited for your move and it, your house looks gorgeous. So please, I hope you feel better. Rest up. And um, I appreciate everything that you do here. Hi, Pam. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, so my segment for Craft Around the Clock. And if you guys have not explored Craft Around the Clock, it's a fabulous Facebook group where you have live crafters every 45 minutes during the week. Fabulous events. Um, we have some cool Friday events coming up and you find some events on the weekend. And it's a fabulous community of all sorts of crafting. I myself am mostly a painter, but I do love to craft too. Hi, Cindy. Cindy, how much snow did you get up there? Cindy lives, lives nearby where I have moved from recently, and I'm in Florida now, so I have avoided all that snow you got. We had tornado warnings last night. As a matter of fact, it's funny, Charlotte, when we were on, it, it had it was calmed down by then, but the uh, warning was on until 9, but we didn't get anything here. Fatima, good morning. Thank you for, for popping in. I want to paint some Valentine's things. I've painted a few things. I have a couple of ideas that we'll do over the next couple weeks. Oh, eight, that's not too bad. I know some people were telling me up further up that they got quite a bit. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, so I'm going to kind of do a little smaller scale version of a painting that I've done a lot in my paint nights. It's just going to be a washy background and we'll paint some hearts. And then we can use our uh, paint markers or some of our uh, puff paints just to embellish. I'm just doing it on a little piece of canvas board here. Can't saw on. It's just a board. It's kind of nice because I could frame it if I want, but it doesn't take a lot of uh, room. Oh, I'm glad then it's gone. Okay, because, yeah, you're supposed to warm up really today, I believe, up in the Northeast. Good morning, Dahlia and Donna. Thank you, guys. We truly appreciate you popping in. And I'm just going to get started with my background. I am just using uh, simple acrylic craft paint. Use what you have. Use what colors you have. I usually pick out like a palette that I like. I'm using a lot of teals and pinks lately. Um, so pick out colors you like. I don't expect you to try to go along and do the same things I do. Everybody has their own style and likes and dislikes. And it's not like you're trying to follow along and do it exactly like I am. I want you to just explore. I show you how I do things. I want you to go ahead and do them however you would like. And that's how you develop your style and whatnot. And so I can't believe we're looking ahead to Valentine's Day, right? I'd love to know what you're working on. Uh, if you have any projects in the works, I have painted, and you might have seen it. I'll show you real quick because we'll start. This won't take too long. This was a painting I did for my art group. We're going to paint its Valentine's chocolate. Kind of wish I painted it really big now. I've used gold leaf on that. And maybe next week, maybe we'll do a little gold leaf something, a little small canvas with some gold leaf if you want to see how that's done. It's a little more brilliant than just your metallic paint. So it's kind of fun. It's a little awkward to work with, but um, it really has a nice look to it. Hey, Cynthia, good morning. And then I finished this. It's not um, Valentine's, but it's going to be one of the upcoming paintings in my group. And it's an enchanted owl. And as we talked about, oops, last night, um, It'd be fun with different animals in the setting. Use the setting. I'm partial to bats, but we could use all kinds of woodland creatures and fairies and whatnot. So that'll be coming up. Um, so let's start getting the background on here. I'm sorry I have that glare. I um, neglected to put my, I uh, put something over the blinds usually to take care of that. But uh, anyway, I'm going to just put in some colors, just washy in the background. I like to sometimes use 
let the background show through the white of the canvas. It gives you a nice glow sometimes, a little more than if I put my colors on and mixed it with white. That gets a little muddy, but if I can put some of the colors on, I'm just putting some of my craft paints out. I've got a wide acrylic brush here. Any old brush will do. And it's going to be kind of a wash, more watercolory like gives me some time to blend. It's going to kind of be abstract. Again, pull out colors you like. I put colors that are on the lighter side. I'm going to just rinse my brush quick when I go to another color, just so I won't contaminate it. And I know I'm working fast, but Yes, Lisa, that's going to be fun. I just painted it, and uh, i got to work out the logistics of it, but you guys will get that painting soon. Um, so I'm working quick so that I can blend these colors together. Um, so I'm just getting random colors. Can you see I'm not really blending them together yet because I don't want it to get muddy. Sometimes if you mix a lot of colors together, you'll get muddy, uh, muted. I want it to stay a little bright, so I'm just going in now with kind of just water, where each color meets and blending it. And I don't mind the white showing through. I'm gonna keep rinsing my brush and drying it a little bit so that I, again, don't mix all the colors together. And I'm just draw, I'm gonna drop some paint on here. Sometimes when I'm painting a big, kind of a little bit of an abstract painting, um, or at least abstract background, I will literally throw paint on the canvas like this but I'll have it at my big easel, so I will even like uh, spatter it on, let it drip. You know, I sometimes will just spatter it. And this is just, you can do it with a toothbrush. I sometimes do it with just a brush because I want the variety of spatters. And look at, because the, can the canvas is wet, see how it's just kind of bleeding out? Kind of fun. Um, all sorts of things. Sometimes I take, you know, I think I will, I cut up a little piece of a, toilet paper roll or paper towel and I can then take this and kind of get some mark making with that. I could use rubber stamps. I didn't pull out all that stuff today but you could really get carried away with things but I'm just getting a base because a lot of little hearts are going to go on top of here and you're not going to really see the background that much. Oh thanks Pam. I just grabbed colors I had out um, and I have more colors here but again I like to limit my palette a lot of times I don't want to go grabbing all the colors under the sun and then it gets a little chaotic and it's funny some of these little look at this little when I spattered and it kind of bled it looks like a little tiny heart so that's kind of cool could even go in now and make some little hearts washy background stuff uh, so let me try that you can make hearts really easily in two strokes so say I take my pink Good morning, Sandy. And I just do two strokes. One, two. You can get some nice heart shapes. And that's kind of fun to, um, to, to practice those little strokes. I want some little heart shapes maybe in the background, but I want them really watery so they're just sort of background stuff. And if I need to, I will dry this up with my heat gun to get started. I'm going to stick with these colors. I don't know if I want to get... I want to get it kind of pastel-y. Um, I'm not really a pastel girl, but in my paintings, I seem to be doing that a little more. Um, let's see. What else could we do? I'll just take, use the colors I have for the moment. And we'll put other colors on top. But suggestions, I would love to have some suggestions. If you guys see, oh, let's try this, let's try that, let's try it. This is an experiment for the most part. Good morning, Nancy. Oh, in Michigan, you're snowy too. Um, we're not snowy here in Florida. It's been cooler, of course, and we had the tornado watch last night, but um, it's really pleasant. I tell you, I'm really enjoying it. And I think I will spatter on some with my toothbrush. I want them to be a little more solid now. The background is drying, so they're not going to bleed like that, but I like that bleed look. And again, a lot of times I will even take the paint, spatter it on here, and let it run down. We won't do that this morning, but I do that sometimes. Mary, oh, I'm glad you caught me live. I'm usually went on Mondays. Um, I was away on the on Sunday and Monday, so I was not on Monday, so I, I'm here on Wednesday, but a lot of times you can find me on Monday. If any of you want to be on my list to be notified when I go live, you could just um, put it, uh, send me a message or, or put it in the post, and I'll send you the link to uh, my list, and I can let you know. Or simply watch my page, because I do post that usually. 
Okay, so I want to put a few more little dots in here and there, and I use my toothbrush for that. You've seen me do that and seen people do that. It's great for starry skies. It's great for snow falling. Um, so I watered down my paint a little bit. I've got an old toothbrush here. I'm going to try it with white because that'll be very subtle, and we'll see how it looks. Because once I paint my hearts on top, I don't want to do this on top of my heart. So anything I want on the background, I will do now. Just a little spattering. There's a little bit in white, very subtle, hard to see. And I will add it with some color too now. And so what has everyone been up to? It's, it's hard to believe we're through the holidays. We're past New Year's. We've made our resolutions and we've got projects and whatnot we want to do. I think I'm spattering in my tea here. But anyway. So what, what are the things that you want to get done this year? What are any kind of crafts or art that you want to embrace or try this year? I know I always have new, I think I've done it all, and then I see something else. And uh, so I'm always excited to, to learn new things, take classes. This is a little of that pink. I think I'll do that and a little teal, and then we're going to dry this and get it started. So, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys, what's on your agenda. I know cleaning out my studio was, was a great thing feeling a little organized. I got a new little organizer for all my paints, which will clear my table off here a little bit. And you can always make dots, which I will maybe later. You can always use a toothpick, a stylus, the end of a paintbrush, and you can, you know, go in and just make dots. I just like to have a kind of a little bit of a busy background, not so much it's going to take away from our hearts, but there you go. That's a little background you could do with all sorts of things. I actually do the same thing, and I've done the same thing we're doing sort of today with shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day, um, and they're just kind of hanging, and it's just kind of decorate a decorative thing. You maybe want to change up the pastel colors, but not necessarily. You can do the shamrocks in these colors as well. Oh, Sandy, I'm so, oh, that's great. Um, I never take the time usually to make my own Christmas cards as much as I tell you guys all to do it. I have to really start early because I have some ideas. And um, and if you watch, I know you probably heard, I, I make a lot by hand. I paint a lot by hand. I take some and I use the photographs on the blank cards. But Vistaprint, if you follow them, getting close to Christmas, they will have a half price sale usually. And you could have them printed up and they come out beautifully. So that's a, you know, get on their mailing list and you'll be notified when they are starting um, that sale. All right, I'm going to paint some hearts on top of here. Now, I might just freehand them, but if you wanted to, good morning, Debbie, you could sketch them with a pencil or a piece of chalk. If you want to get a little more careful, like, um, and trace them, here's what I do. I'm going, I almost started a project this morning with these little uh, hearts on a panel, which I, I just didn't really get determined exactly what I want to do. So I have them started. And something like this, I wanted a heart about that size. So I simply took a piece of computer paper, folded it in half. I got it measured to like about what size I wanted. And you can do this, for instance, if you want to trace your hearts on. I don't get that particular, really. But if you're worried about sketching them and you don't want them looking too wonky, you can simply just sketch it on the fold. And then you could just sketch, trace them on from the little piece of paper. If you really, you know, were worried about having them just so. I don't really... I'm not really worried. I'm going to sketch them on just so I have the placement. And then we'll just paint in solid colors for the hearts. And then we're going to just decorate them kind of fun. Hi, Darlie. Oh, thank you so much. I love it when you sprinkle because there's lots of people out there that don't know that we're in this little corner of the world. And they might like to create. And it's fun to let them know. So thank you. So I'm going to just... Um, sketch hearts. And, and, and again, I use chalk many times um, because I can erase it. I mightn't see the chalk on this light pastel background. So I'm just going to sketch them. And I want to do them. I want to vary the size. And they could, I don't want them to be all static. So let's start making them some a little sideways so it's almost like they're kind of floating. I could leave a space here to write something if you wanted to put a saying or happy Valentine's Day. You may want to put a bigger heart or even simply in one of the smaller hearts, you could do initials. Kind of a cool gift, you know, um, for a couple. So always think outside the box. I'm always trying to tell you, here's what I do. Here's how I do it. But look at, you could do this. You could change it that way. So I'm just getting a little bunch of hearts there. 
good enough. Um, oh, did I go in a barrel over Niagara Falls, Pam? It's on my bucket list. Not really, but that would be fun. Hey, Barbara. Thank you guys all for tuning in. This has been a great group for a, a spur of the moment almost. Uh, I never decide what I'm doing right away. Group here. Okay. Random. I'm just going to use various colors for my hearts. I might take a few different colors out. I might get a purple here. Uh, it's acrylic paint. So you know what's good about that is if you don't like something, you can paint over it. So notice how I'm just using a flat brush and I'm just using it to shape, make my shape. So I'm not struggling trying to draw a perfect heart. I'm just using the brush. Acrylic paint's a little transparent. Sometimes that works for us, but if I want a little more coverage, I will simply let it dry and put a second coat. So maybe I will just repeat a couple of these colors. And then we're just going to have fun embellishing them. And there. <laughs> It's really funny. I, I really, truly do. I was out here this morning thinking, oh, I had an idea for something. And it, I, I said, let me just practice it a couple of times. I really didn't like the way the little hearts came out. So I sw quickly pivoted and I'm doing something that I know I've done something like this, like I said, in my paint nights. Uh, it's looking Barbie-ish to me with all the pinks. Um, so I thought we would just do this. But I have an idea, like I said, for those little squares. I have done them before with just mixed media. Uh, on them, I would glue, maybe get like music or you can, I have some old music books I tear apart, but you could also just print it up and maybe it like a love song or something. And I uh, just mod podge that on. I put some stamps. I do some of this stuff with the spattering, cut out the heart shapes and glue them on. And then I use different words. Sometimes I just use my label maker and I'll make a cute little phrase and I'll use the label maker. Maybe we'll do that next time because then I shade around the little labels and it really has a nice look to it. And then I take, and I have it out because I may try it, is I have the twine and I tie a little old fashioned key to it. So sometimes on that panel, I will just do that and then tie some twine and put a little old key hanging. So keep your eyes open. We're gonna, that, that'll work into something for us next week. I just am not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. So we'll, I'll, I'll play around with that, but. Uh, like I say, sometimes I'm in the morning and I'm just trying to think of what should we do today? So it is kind of last minute. I might take a little white. I might just shade, uh, use various shades of the pinks. I need it a little darker though, I guess, than the background. So we'll just do a little bit, another pink heart here. They don't have to, all, they can be any color. It's not like I'm trying to do just colors you would see hearts in. You can, I'm gonna do green. I would do all the different things. And remember the background technique, could very well be for any sort of painting. Uh, let's go teal over here. And I did get my paint markers out. I may use my brush, but sometimes the paint markers, if you are a little unsure, like for the lines, we're gonna have these hanging by strings. And sometimes you might say, oh, it's gonna be hard for me to paint a line. You can use your markers, so don't worry. Try to make everything a bit easy, even if it's a complicated painting, like the owl painting I showed you. I break it down step by step for you so I can get you through that easily. It just might take a little longer than our little 45 minutes we have here, but um, just following along step by step, not worrying about the whole picture, you'd be surprised how far you can come, even if you're not a painter or you've not painted before. So I don't want you to be afraid of painting. I want you to jump in and give it a try sometimes. It's always nice to challenge ourselves a little bit, right? That could be a New Year's resolution. So if you're more of a crafter and a little afraid to start painting, I'm going to urge you to give it a try. I'm going to use some blue in there too. And I do like painting. This is a mixed media canvas board. It's from Canson and it's a nice heavy weight. So it's not flimsy and I can still like, of course, frame it, but it I was always doing my samples on stretched canvases, and to be honest, I just don't have the room. So I have been doing them on these boards a lot of times. But again, I like painting on the wood panels, or even when I do those little mixed media 
squares I was talking about that I would put the, uh, you know, Mod Podge on different uh, scrapbook papers or book pages or music sheets and then just embellish a little bit. I do that on wood, just pieces of wood. I go to Home Depot and they have them cut up like six inch, a, a six inch board into six inch pieces and it gives me nice little squares and I rather Mod Podge and uh, mix media onto the hard surface. If I do it on a canvas, it sort of has a little give to it. So when I do it on the wood, I can get that paper on there, Mod Podge, and get the bubbles out and get it nice and smooth. It's a nice surface and inexpensive. You could get like out of one, you know, six foot piece. Look at how many little squares you'd get. So that's kind of cool. Hi, Vicki. Thank you so much. And Pat, oh, we had a lot of, we had a couple of ladies from Georgia last night on with our uh, art group. And yeah, it was a little chilly. What other colors do we want? I want to get a green. Oh, I've got the teal. It's kind of on the green tones. Um, let me look at my sample here. I had some dark greens and some dark colors. Let's get a dark, like a little bit more of a maroon, just to give a little bit, get away from the pastels a tiny bit. And again, I'm going to embellish these little hearts quite a bit with little dots and dashes and uh, little lines and things. So it's not going to just be these really um, just blank hearts, but we're just getting them placed. And then I'll give them a quick dry. I might leave them. I like the way that some of the, it's transparent. It's, that will work for us with what we're doing for this painting. Uh, maybe some green. Oh, no, I think I'm going to go with this. It's kind of an orange, but it's a little on the pastel side. So let's do that. And, and it doesn't have to be just for Valentine's Day. This would be a fun project. This would be a fun project to actually do with the kids, maybe too. You know how they have their they just let their imagination run wild, and uh, that might be kind of fun. Now I'm doing this orange, and because it's translucent, you can see I've got a little bit of a dark mark there. Um, but I'm going to put something over that at, so I'm not going to really worry about that. So we'll do one more orange down here, and then we'll do one more heart. I think maybe I'll just use the yellow for that. We'll see. There, a little another, another little orange heart. And if my outline shows, no worries, because I think I'll outline them with my paint marker a bit. And one more color. Let's go with something. Uh, I'm looking here now at my... Uh, at my colors and I'm noticing some of the metallics. This would be really kind of fun with some metallics as well. Let's just do this with a yellow. Sometimes I base coat my yellows with white so it's a little brighter. I don't think I need to. I think I might just take a little white in with my paint and that just makes it a little bit more opaque sometimes. If you have a translucent color, could have done that with the oranges, but like I said, this is just the base and we're gonna layer it on top. So let's do the little strings that are holding these up that are floating. And then when that's dry, we'll put all our little embellishments. Hi, Sandy and Julie, good morning. Good morning, you guys. Thanks for popping in and, and supporting my little page here. If you are not a follower on Tinker's Cart Art, please just click on that button and you will be notified when I'm going live and doing all the fun things. Let's use a marker. You could use a Sharpie. I'm use, I've got some Posca. I like for paint markers, Poscas are my favorite um, because there's paint right in there and it uh, looks like paint more than, sometimes I'll use a Sharpie, but that's very flat looking. Always make super sure that your paint is dry that you're going on because if it's just a little damp, you will seize that marker up. I think I'm okay in all the spots I need. So I'm just going to make a little line connecting that to the top. You could do it in white. You could do it in any color you want. Do not worry. I'm not using a ruler. It's not going to be like it has to be perfect. Um, it can be have a little wiggle to it. Let's make this one connecting. This little one had to connect. I am not fussing and being super careful with it. That one doesn't even have to connect if I don't want to. And I'm just getting an, keeping an eye on the background because there's a few little dots of paint that are a little wet and I'm kind of just going through, going around those because I don't want to wreck my marker here. So we've connected them all. I'm going to make them have a little 
almost like a little bow up here. So this, you know, just, just for fun. When you have these kind of funky backgrounds, you could, like I said, stamp, you could write in like a really washy, a phrase, a color, your word of the year, um, very lightly in the background. You could hide little symbols. You could do whatever you want. So go ahead and use your imagination with this sort of thing. Sometimes I just go ahead and make just little hearts. I don't want to use the black for that because it's a little bit uh, dark. But if I just grab some of my markers and just, you know, want to make little hearts just to carry that theme through. So on top of the pink, they don't show up very much. On here, they do. And that's okay. I want them just random. I could put a few. I am doing them very quickly. I'm not worrying what they look like. If I want with the little hearts that we made washy, I could outline them a little bit. These markers are so fun. These markers are great for painting rocks, too, if you like to paint rocks. And just kind of have fun with them. The white might be fun if it shows up even, because if I go into a darker place, it shows up a little, but sometimes I want some of this to be real subtle. You can do dots. I know we did dots with our brush before, but this is just to kind of make the background a little interesting. Um, I think I would like to do some heavier white dots which probably don't show with my little marker, so I'll get my stylus out. No, actually the back end of a brush because I want them to be a little bigger. So while I'm getting my hearts to dry, just sort of adds texture, I guess. I do this sometimes even on top of, like I said, when I did mixed media and I have the papers down or a book page or something, I'll do some of this right on top of it. It just gives a nice layered look. And just have fun. It's just playing, really, which is kind of fun sometimes. If you've been working on a project like my owl, say, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of fall, you know, get very careful work. Isn't it kind of fun to kind of break it out and do something where you're just basically playing for a change? It's almost like confetti. Might be cute for a wedding idea where you could have a bigger heart in the middle with the bride and groom's names or initials and then the wedding party name around or something. There's lots of things you could do. Hey, Katie, good morning. Yeah, isn't it funny? Just a little something. Um, I didn't know if the black would be too much, but I think you need it to see. So let's play around with embellishing our little hearts. I'm going to do some with paint first. And so I have this pink one here, I think for the middle, say I want a real light pink. I'm going to use the colors I have and just change them by adding lights and darks rather than bring in a bunch of new paint. We can certainly just use what we have. And that kind of keeps you painting a little more cohesive. So if I paint some little hearts inside these hearts, let's try that to start. Just little hearts inside. I could go light. I could do a dark center on this one. I'm using just a little flat brush. I like the way it makes the shape of the hearts for me. And it is a little easier sometimes if I turn my work. No rhyme or reason, no real pattern. I'm just going to fill in the middles, and then I am going to add little dashes and stripes and, and whatever you can think of. Um, and let's see. This one, I'm going to just do a little quick coat on the outside there. Again, if I get light, I could do, especially because I want to use that white to maybe cut up, cover that little bit. It was just a bit of that little ring I put down in teal. So I'm covering it by using a good bit of white in the middle there. I'm not really worried about the paint mixing. It's very rough on this one, and it's the look I'm looking for. So there we've got a little bit of a lighter shades. So maybe the lighter shades in, in the middle would work. Maybe in the middle of this yellow one, I could do orange. I'm just trying to get different colors just to play around. And if you've just jumped in, any questions, please just let me know. And remember, this is a recorded, so you can find the whole video out there. If you're watching from the replay, even have any questions, just let me know. Hey, Sandy. Hi. Oh, Katie, you're in. Now, how far are you from me in Lakeland there? 
Dland. I know I've heard of it, but I'm not sure. And hello, June. Thank you for watching. Thanks for popping in. I'm going to get a kind of a lighty color for this one. I'm having fun. I, I, my family's in Florida. I'm down to Florida an awful lot, but there's a lot of places now that I'm here that I want to explore. Found a great art community here in Lakeland. It's really cool. Um, a lot of opportunities for shows and, and exhibits and things, which I'm having fun with. Uh, let's do a little blue in the middle of this one. It's very similar in shade, but I like the way those two colors look together. And then I could even do something like just take white now and just do the edge. That's kind of fun. North of Orlando. Oh, okay. Yeah, not bad at all. My son lives in Orlando and my sister's in Orlando, so that I'm over there a lot too. Uh, maybe a little bit of a light purple here. This would make a nice card too, actually. Let's see. Oh, Pat, yeah, I have a girlfriend in Claremont, and I do get up that way. What's what's what are you, what's bringing you over to Claremont tomorrow? Really is nice. It's a nice ride. I love the winery there. They have a fabulous winery in, in up in Claremont, Lake Ridge Winery. Okay, so basically you can see what I'm doing. I did a coat of paint to make hearts. Now I'm doing little different colors on the inside. And a, a just ordinary craft acrylic paint, whatever you have works. All righty, let's get something in the middle over here of this guy. Mm, let's see what a light yellow looks like. And I don't have to worry too much about like, oh, what if that color doesn't look right? If I'm sticking with the palette I started with, it will work because I'm not bringing in some random color that's not in here. So I'm almost pretty guaranteed that whatever color I grab will work. I am lightening them up just so they show up. That one I went dark though, that's okay. You can always go darker too. And I've pretty much got all of those guys going. Let's do a little bit, maybe a little teal inside this one just to see randomly like grabbing colors, does it work? And I think it does. Super fun. Oh, Charlotte, it's hanging. There's a little show and it's not like for awards or anything. It's just an exhibit and they are for sale. And it was an exhibit where you took a thrifted piece of uh, print, like a painting, a print of a painting or something. You could only spend a certain amount, and then you painted some details to it, not painted over completely. And it was really a fun um, project. I don't know if you saw um, the picture, but it's on my page. It was just a pencil drawing, really, of a koala bear. And I added really kind of an elaborate hat on his head, including palm trees, pineapples, and alligators and all that stuff. So it was fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nashville's on my bucket list for like a long weekend. So that would be fun. Alrighty. So now I am just going to, I probably will give this a little dry uh, with my heat gun so I can start putting all the little fun bits. But let me brighten this little uh, bit of yellow up. Um, let me just brighten up a few of these since I'm going to take the heat gun to it anyway. Uh, maybe get this a little bit more orange. The orange is very transparent. Orange and yellow is, is super transparent. Get this border a little bit better shape there, maybe. And you could very well, if you really wanted to, to not have these a little transparent, you could certainly just do another coat on there. Um, if I had more time and I was really wanting it to be just so, I would maybe do that. For instance, like this little pink uh, border here, I can see my pencil line. I shouldn't even worry about that though, because I can really just cover that up when I do all my little embellishments. So let me just, and I always want to say, okay, just leave it. And isn't it hard sometimes just to step away and leave it? I just, 
I tell you, oh, step away from that, and then I'm here like fiddling. I don't think I'm alone though. So let me just quickly just give it a little blast with the heat gun, and then we can have fun with the markers and things without worrying about the paint being wet. And I'm gonna mute it just so you don't have to listen to the noise. So give me one All right, so now is where the fun begins, and you can do what you wish. I'm going to take some, uh, let's see how the marker does, or I can do it with paint. Markers are easier for, for a lot of people. I'm comfortable with the paintbrush, so I don't mind um, doing that. But let's just see. I like to outline things, add little dots. Um, yes, actually, I will, but not really carefully, kind of rough. Same with the white. So I sometimes will just take and just put the white in. It, I think I'm better off with my brush, but let's just do the black a little bit. So yes, I don't try to carefully copy it perfectly. I would almost like stop and start and make it a little rough. And sometimes it's a couple of lines. So say this little guy, I'm doing that and I can do a couple. I want it to be a little loose. If you start getting really tight, then you have to have everything perfect. So I will do that. And again, sometimes just like a couple. And I'm going to do some with some colors too. Let's just do a little bit with this. And while you're at it, you can just add some little freestyle ones here and there too. I'm very rough here and on purpose. When I'm doing lines sometimes or, or even lettering i will do it a little wonky on purpose just so we're not trying to make it perfect uh, let me try a little white i think it'll just be a little heavier with um the brush so if i want to for instance kind of outline some of these middle hearts i might do that and again while you have that on your brush if you want to do some dots if you need a little doodad or some little hearts oh and i'm doing it up where you can't see it so that's helpful Little hearts with your white, little dots you can. And this is, like I say, you just do you on this part. You can uh, take what I'm doing and then step back and say, oh, I like, really like polka dots. I'm going to do a lot of polka dots. I love polka dots, actually. We will do some polka dots. And sometimes I will do stripes. So for instance, we could maybe just take a light pink here and I'll just do the stripes here for this one. See how rough I'm doing it? I'm not measuring the space. I want it to look just funky, kind of um, kind of a funky look. Uh, dots, remember you can use the back end of your brush. You can just do I even little hearts in the middle of these hearts. Let's so if you want to go over here, maybe even more of a purple and put a little heart right in the middle. We can do that. And again, while you have it, maybe throw a little heart here and there. Okay, polka dot stripes. Um, what if I took um, just a tiny bit brighter blue? Let's see. A little darker blue, maybe. Again, this you could do with your markers as well. Um, you know, if you wanted to, let's see, for instance, use your brush if you're comfortable, use your markers if you want. So say I wanted to do a darker blue. Some of these markers are kind of older. Let's try the newer ones. Okay, so I could just go ahead and just, if you're more comfortable, just making them with your marker.
I like the markers because they come in different widths, so I could even use a wider one there. And then you could just kind of go and make another stripe. Oops, carry that on through. And that's what it is. I mostly do dashes and uh, dots and things. So if we get like a nice pink here, for instance, and then got a little lighter and did like two stripes, just, I guess it's like just texture or layers building it up. Ooh, you know what? I want some red in the middle of those uh, hearts. Just a little bit red. I know this is Valentine's and we've used everything but red. Let's just do a teeny bit. And like I said, anything that I'm doing here, you could be doing with your markers if you'd rather. I'm just pretty comfortable with my brush. So we've got some red and we can do some little red hearts here and there. Um, I like to outline also with white where I did black. If you find that the uh, lines are too dark. You can just take your white on top and kind of go around them or just soften them. But I like to go and do some outlines with the white too. I'm going a little heavy with my paint here so it shows up. We could do like little hearts within a heart. Just little strokes. And these are strokes. If you just practice these little strokes, it's kind of fun. You could write in them. Like I said, initials, kind of fun, people's initials. I want a darker orange. Do I have a darker orange? Just for some accents. Little starbursts. Any sort of little patterns. Yeah, Donna, those are great for rock painting. They really are wonderful. And, you know, any kind of little design work that you like. I want to think, I might leave some of these blank to, to try to think of some words. Throw out some little short words I could put in there on some of them. It might be kind of cool. Um, I love spirals. So in the background, I would probably put some spirals. And uh, they're subtle, but I just love the whole spiral um design see how subtle they are they could be subtle like that I'm, the white on top of the little bit of a darker color but then if you wanted to take and get a little bit more obvious you can do them however you want i think that's kind of like a fun party kind of a thing i'm not looking carefully of where i'm placing these i'm sort of just randomly going in there I think some of the dark teal. Hugs and kisses. X oh, good one. You guys are good. See, um, let's do that. Hang on. Let's do XOXO up here. I could just think of the little things they put on the candy hearts too, right? Uh, hugs, yes. Let's do hugs here. We'll do it dark so we can read it. And just to mention, I would love it if you hang out and follow our creators today. Uh, if you are on Craft Around the Clock, sometimes you just need to refresh your page afterwards. So give it a minute and then refresh your page. You'll have the new crafter. And can you see how fun these are to, to do? Um, if you want to add a little dimension, I can go ahead and use... I like these puff paints. I use them for fabric painting. And where are you guys? I have, oh, pink. Just These are kind of fun to add dimension. Oh, be mine. Yes, I will do that too. These are fun though if you want to just add a little dimension to your painting. Oops, I didn't mean to do that little blob, but you could do little dots because they'll be a little more raised. And I have all colors and I do have a gold, which is really a nice metallic gold, which might be kind of cool too. That would be very cute, Selena cards. Yeah, um, I know we have just about a minute left, but you guys get the idea. And um, like I said, uh, I do it with shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day. You could think of other shapes. You could do stars. 
Uh, there's all sorts of things you could do. And I don't have much metallic on here, but this particular, I use it for my glass painting. It's a Peebo, and I just like the metallics. I use a lot of the tulip, the slick paints, but for the metallic, these really show up nice. So, for instance, maybe on the orange one, we want to do a little bit, and it's raised, so that's kind of cool. I know that's kind of hard to see, but it's really raised um, gold, which is kind of fun. It has a nice, really fine point that really gets a, a tiny little line. But let's do a little more writing. I think I have to sign off now, actually, you guys. So we are done with our session. It is Pam at Slick Paint. And these, it's, this is a Peebo uh, paint, like a relief outliner, it's called. I'm going to pop off because I want you to stay tuned. And it's uh, Cindy's Creations coming up now. So just refresh your page. I'll see you next week. And um, I'd love to see you over on my page, too. I'll let you know when I'm coming on. Bye now. <laughs>